let's go through and try calculating the personal income tax for the following for the following individual. Let's suppose that we are going to help out Robbie here. Robbie is divorced and is raising two children under the age of 17. Robbie's income was $50,400 in wages. They received $2,000 in tips, $125 in interest from investment and savings, and is getting $4,000 in alimony and child support for the divorce. In this case, if we're looking for the total amount of income, we can simply add all of these different values together. So 50,400 plus $2,000 in tips, plus $125 in interest, plus $4,000 in alimony support, and we get a total income of $56,525. Now let's suppose that Robbie is trying to save for retirement and has contributed $1,200 this year, taking $100 out of each of her month, month's paychecks to save for retirement. Now, the government likes us to do retirement. This is considered one of those pre-tax or above-the-line deductions. So we can subtract this retirement contribution and bring the, tax, the, the income value down. This gives us our adjusted gross income. So in this case, we'll take that $56 525 and we'll get to subtract that $1,200 pre-tax deduction. And this will give us an adjusted gross income of $55,325. Once you've calculated the adjusted gross income, the next thing that we need to do is take into consideration any deductions. At this point, what we're going to be deciding is, can we use a standard deduction or can we itemize our deductions to maybe get a better return? Well, Robbie decided to try to itemize deductions and was able to come up with a total of $15,000 by adding up things like property tax, sales tax, a variety of other deductions that they were that they had made over the past year. Now the standard deduction is going to depend upon Robbie's filing status. Uh, the filing status, because we're single with dependents, Robbie should be filing as head of household. So when we want to see what the standard deduction is, we can look at Again, remember these change every year. For the year 2023, heads of households can deduct $20,800. All right, so which of these are we going to want to choose? Well, in this case, $20,800 is going to be a better deduction than $15,000. You're only allowed one or the other. So we're not going to be able to take this itemized deduction in this case. So our taxable income is our AGI, or $55,325, minus, in this case, we're going to choose the standard deduction instead of the itemized deduction. So we're going to use the $20,800 head of household standard deduction. When we subtract that out, we end up with $34,000. $525, and this is the taxable income that we're going to look up on our tax tables. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull out our tax tables. Remember, your tax table depends on your filing status, uh, and Robbie is filing as head of household. So here's the head of household tax table, and again, we're using the numbers from 2023 for this example. Uh, Robbie's income here was $34,525. And so if we look at 
our different statuses here. She's uh, they're going to be ending up here in the 12 percent tax bracket because um, that's where 34,000 lies between these two numbers. So how do we figure out the tax owed? That amount of information is right here. It's going to be $1,570 plus 12% of the amount over $15,700. let us set that up here. So the tax from the table is going to be $1,570 plus 12% of the amount over $15,700. Well, she made... 34,525 minus 15,700 because we only want to pay the 12% on that upper amount. So pulling that into our calculator, 1570 plus 12% of 34,525 minus 15,700 and we end up with a tax due of $3,452.50. Once you figure out the amount of tax that's due, the last thing that we need to do is figure out what's going on in terms of how much we still have to pay. There are a couple of things that can be done to contribute to this. You might qualify for tax credits, and essentially this is cash that we can apply towards this amount. Um, and we also can have um, money that was set aside by our, our employer. In this case, Robbie had two children. If there's a $2,000 tax credit per child, then Robbie would qualify for $4,000 of tax credits. Notice Robbie only owed $3,452.50. So their tax credit is going to cover the amount of tax that's due. In some cases in the child tax credit is one of those examples. This can actually result in additional money coming from the government to cover this. So if we look at what's going on here, if we had a $4,000 tax credit, but we only owed $3,452.50, this could result in getting a refund of $547.50. Our tax due was covered by the tax credits. Now, sometimes your employer will set aside money. Uh, they're generally legally obligated to do that to save up for taxes. If the employer had set aside $1,200 to cover taxes, because Robbie doesn't owe anything, they're going to get all $1,200 of that back. So the $547.50 refund from the tax credits, plus getting back all $1,200 of the dollars that were set aside from the employer. And in this case, Robbie should expect a total refund of $1,747.50.